The idea of efficiency in physics is another idea that's pretty similar to how we use it in our everyday lives. The definition of efficiency is the ratio of how much useful energy or power we get out of a system versus how much energy we put into the system. It can be expressed as a number between 0 and 1, or a percentage between 0% and 100%. It does not have a unit because it is a division of two identical variables, two types of work or energy or power. So efficiency is the useful work out over the total work in, or the useful power out over the total power going into the system. Just to show you that these two things are equivalent, the power out over the power in, because power is equal to work over time, is equal to the work out of a system over the time, divided by the work going into a system over the same time, and if we cancel out the time that's just the useful work out over the total work in. You might ask yourself, how do we know which power coming out of a system counts as useful? And that is kind of subjective. It's based on how we're looking at the problem and what we want to get out of the situation. As an example, the average incandescent light bulb has an efficiency of just 5%, or 0 0.05. This means that 5% of the electrical energy we put into the light bulb is converted into useful energy. And because this is a light bulb, when we use it, we usually want to get light out of it. So we consider the useful energy to be whatever radiant energy or light energy we get out of this machine. If it's just 5% efficient, that means that 5% of the electrical energy that goes in gets turned into radiant energy, the stuff that we want. And 95% leaves the bulb as useless energy. In this case, it leaves it as heat specifically. Whenever we use an incandescent light bulb, no matter how much electricity we're putting into it, only 5% comes back to us as useful radiant energy, and the rest is lost as heat to the environment. As an example, if an incandescent bulb is a 60 watt bulb, that means that 60 watts of electrical energy are going into the bulb, but only 3 watts of useful radiant energy, just 5% of that 60, are coming out of the bulb as radiant energy, and the rest, the other 57 watts, 95% of the energy, is coming out as useless thermal energy. And again, what counts as useful energy really depends on the situation and what we want to do with the device. For example, in cold weather, we do want our homes to be heated, so thermal energy is useful to us. And in this case, we could possibly say that the light bulb could be understood as 100% efficient because all of the energy is useful and valuable to us. So what counts as useful energy is kind of subjective and based on the problem that you're trying to solve with the machine. Just as a note, lost or useless power or work is usually thermal energy. When we talk about that, we usually mean heat leaving a system. This is not always true, but it can be assumed when it's not clear where the energy is going. Here are a few example problems. In this first one, a forklift uses 10,000 joules of electrical energy to lift a 50 kilogram box 5 meters. What is the efficiency of the forklift? We know that the total work in is equal to 10,000 joules of electrical energy. It's using 10,000 joules of energy to perform this task. And I can see that the change in potential energy as it lifts the box is going to be from 0 to 5 meters, so the change is just going to be the potential energy that this box has at 5 meters, which is 50 kilograms times 9.8 times 5, just mass times gravity times height, which is equal to 2,450 joules. So that's how much energy this forklift was able to turn into useful energy, the good type of energy that we want in this case, which is gravitational potential energy. Like a forklift is designed to give objects gravitational potential energy. So that means that the useful workout is also 2,450 joules. Because the efficiency is the useful work out over the total work in, that's going to be 2,450 over 10,000, which is equal to 0.245 or 24.5%. To convert between a decimal and a percentage, you just multiply or divide by 100. What this is saying is that this forklift is 24.5% efficient. Whatever energy you put into the forklift as electrical energy, it's going to be able to use about 24.5% of that energy as useful gravitational potential energy. The rest of the energy is probably lost to heat in the engine of the forklift. Lift. We can do another example problem. A 60 watt light bulb that is 5% efficient is left on for 4 hours. How much thermal energy is created by the light bulb? I'm going to start by rewriting the 5% as a decimal because that's a little easier to do math with. 5% is equal to 0 0.05 when written as a decimal. I know that 0 0.05 is equal to the efficiency, so that's equal to the useful power out over the total power in, and I know that the total power going into the system is 60 because it's a 60 watt light bulb, so that 0 0.05 is equal to the useful power that we're getting out of the light bulb divided by 60. Using that setup, I can find the useful power that we're getting out of this light bulb. I can see that that's 0 0.05, remembering that efficiency doesn't have a unit, times 60 watts, which is equal to 3 watts. But that's not what the question is asking about. It's asking about how much thermal energy is created by the light bulb. If this light bulb really is 5% efficient, that means that when we put 60 watts in of electrical energy, we get 3 watts of radiant energy out, so the rest must be thermal energy. So that means that it's 57 watts of power that's going into thermal energy specifically.
and 57 watts of power means 57 joules of energy created every second. We can now solve the problem of how much thermal energy was created in four hours, because we know that it's generating 57 watts of thermal power, which means that it's generating 57 joules per second of thermal energy. So that's the power that exists for thermal energy, and this is the time, and we need that in seconds because physics always measures time in seconds. Multiplying that out gets me 14,400 seconds. And power is the change in energy over time, so plugging that in, 57 watts is equal to the change in energy over 14,400 seconds. Therefore, the total thermal energy created by this 60 watt light bulb in four hours is 820,800 joules. It's pretty mind blowing that a small household light bulb like that can create so much energy. Moving on to problem number three, an 800 kilogram car's engine is 30% efficient. If we want to accelerate the car from 10 meters per second to 20 meters per second, how much chemical energy from the gas do we need to use? So I remember that work is equal to change in energy. And here I need to know the starting and final kinetic energy of the car because we're changing the energy in some way and that additional kinetic energy is the good useful energy I'm trying to get out of this system. The starting kinetic energy of the car is one half times its mass times its velocity squared which is equal to 40,000 joules. The final kinetic energy is one half times 800 times 20 squared which is equal to 160,000 joules. So the change in energy is 120,000 joules. So that's how much useful energy is being added to the system. So the useful workout is 120,000 joules. And because the car is 30% efficient, I'm going to rewrite that as a decimal, which is 0.3. Plugging that in, 0.3 is equal to 120,000 joules over the total work in. So the total work in is equal to this number, which is equal to 400,000 joules. Just to repeat, if a car's engine is 30% efficient and you want to make it accelerate from 10 meters per second to 20 meters per second, you're going to have to put in 400,000 joules of chemical energy from the gas to give it that 120,000 joules of extra kinetic energy.